Hey guys, so last video, uh, and this time we're going to talk about lower appendicular. Once we've covered the lower appendicular, we will be officially done with the skeleton. Um, so keep in mind, lower appendicular is going to consist of the limb bones, so your leg bones, as well as the pelvic girdle. So let's go ahead and start with the pelvis. Um, here we are, we're looking at it from an anterior view. And there's three main bones that make up the pelvis. This top region is going to be our ilium. The pointy region here is the pubis. And the rounded region is the ischium. The remaining um, things that we're going to go over are going to be features. Uh, so first off, the topmost portion of the ilium is going to be our iliac crest and the actual like body of it it kind of looks like an axe is the iliac blade from there we've got quite a few features that it's going to be important to know the orientation uh, of the pelvis first so you're going to want to make sure that you're looking at the anterior side um, the pubis is very pointy, pointy pubis, and um, that's going to help you know that you're looking at anterior. So that being said, we've got these two spines here. First off, we have the anterior, superior, because it's on top, iliac spine. And when you look at this, um, or anytime you read about this in medical journals, they might spell it out the first time, but after that they tend to say, um, the AS IS there we go um, and then below that we have the anterior inferior iliac spine if we look on the opposite side we have the posterior sorry the yeah posterior superior iliac spine PSIS and then we also have the posterior inferior iliac spine okay so just know as long as you know your orientation then you'll be able to figure out which spine is which um, because they're just named by location um, from there uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the other features if we turn to look at a lateral aspect this region here is the acetabulum this is where the head of the femur is going to fit in. Um, so this is kind of like the socket of the ball and socket joint. Um, and then just below that we've got this hole. This is our obturator foramen. Good? All right. Um, if we, sorry, I'm just checking my notes, making sure I get everything. If we look um, towards the posterior, I'm going to turn it just below our posterior inferior iliac spine. We've got this notch here. This is the greater sciatic notch. Um, so your sciatic nerve is going to kind of like run through this region. And then as you travel um, in the inferior direction, we have this spine here. Um, this is our spine of the ischium. So spine of the ischium. And just below the spine of the ischium, we have the um, lesser sciatic notch. So greater sciatic notch, spine of the ischium, or ischial spine, and um, lesser sciatic notch. From there, we hit a tuberosity. So tuberosities tend to um, protrude a little bit. They tend to be a lot rougher, so that way um, there's you know more surface for the uh, tendons to hold on to in these regions. So this is going to be our ischial tuberosity. And then if we turn to look um, so that we can see the um, obturator foramen, this little arm here, this is going to be our ischial ramus. Halfway through though, we then hit the pubis. So then it becomes the um, inferior pubic ramus, we then have the superior pubic ramus. Okay, so 
um, we're looking at, you know, the arms here or these, you know, pieces, bridges that make up the obturator foramen. Um, again, we have the ischial ramus, inferior pubic ramus, and superior pubic ramus. Um, and then last thing I want to note, I think I covered everything, um, is it's the pubic, subpubic angle that's going to help you determine whether or not you're looking at a male or female pelvis. Um, when it comes to, I don't have two halves of the pelvis with me, um, when it comes to the angle of the, um, of what the inferior pubic rami make. Um, for a male, that angle is gonna be less than 90 degrees. For a female though, it's gonna be greater than 90 degrees. Because of that greater than 90 degrees in the female, it's gonna help make a wider true pelvis um, and that's gonna accommodate the head of a child during childbirth. All right, so now that we've talked about the pelvis, Let's go ahead and talk about the femur, since the femur hooks right into the acetabulum. Um, let's start off with the most obvious, the head. Okay, so we've got the head here, which makes this region the neck. And from the neck, we then head to this large structure here, which is the um, greater trochanter. As you can see, um, well, hopefully you can see, uh, we've got lines showing that the, almost like the grain of the bone is traveling in this direction on the neck. However, it's gonna switch up when we get to the greater trochanter. And this line area that's kind of distinguishing where we're shifting from neck to greater trochanter is gonna be our intertrochanteric line. intertrochanteric line. On the other side though, it's much more pronounced. It's not just a line, all right? It's actually um, three-dimensional here, uh, and so we call this our intertrochanteric ridge. The reason it's inter or between trochanters is because we're going to go from the greater trochanter, follow along the intertrochanteric ridge, and hit our lesser trochanter, right? From there, we have this um, region here. It kind of sticks out a little bit. Hopefully you can see these lines here. This is our linea aspera. And as we follow the linea aspera, we're gonna head towards the distal end of the femur. So here we go. Um, we are currently looking at the posterior side. The anterior side is kind of like I don't know, like a knuckle. So this is the front of your knee, essentially, except that I don't have a patella here. This is the back. This is the back of your knee. Um, first thing you wanna do is figure out, well, am I holding a left or right? And that's gonna come down to the side that the head is facing. The head is gonna face the medial side because it's going to fit into the acetabulum. If this is the medial side, that means that this guy here is your medial condyle. This one is gonna be your lateral condyle. Um, once we know which side is medial and lateral, then we, if we know that these are our condyles, we know that the region above is gonna be our lateral epicondyle and our medial epicondyle. The distal end of the femur is pretty simple. Uh, so that's it for the femur. Let's move on to the tibia. Um, same thing with the tibia. Uh, you're going to want to figure out, well, is this a left or a right? And to do that, um, you're going to look at the distal end. This is what we refer to as the medial malleolus. That faces the inner portion of your ankle. So this means that this is a left, okay? Because um, the 
medial malleolus is going to kind of like face the right hand side. So if it faces the right, you have a left. If it's on the left, you have a right. Okay. Um, so now that we know that we have a left tibia, if we go up here, we know that we have a medial tibial condyle and the lateral tibial condyle. These are where the condyles of the femur are going to um, glide against. Well, it's more like a hinge. Um, and then if you look at this bump here, this is the tube tuberosity. It is a tuberosity. This is the tibial tuberosity. Um, this is uh, just below your knee. You can feel it. You can palpate it yourself. Um, and normally if you've ever had the knee jerk test, your doctor will actually feel for this and then hit just above it um, to get that knee jerk um, reaction from you. So that here is our tibial tuberosity. Um, we then have the shaft of the tibia and I'm going to turn it sideways. Hopefully you can see this is very pronounced. Okay, this looks like a good view. Because of its of how pronounced it is, it has its name, the um, anterior tibial crest. Okay, and then from there we head down to medial malleolus. Okay, that covers the tibia. Let's take a look at the fibula. All right, so next to the tibia, we have the fibula. Uh, and the first thing you're going to do is figure out which direction do I hold this, right? This is one of the bones that you're just kind of like, uh, what's the top and what's the bottom? Uh, one way that you can look at it is, first off, this end here is what's going to rest against the tibia. It's got kind of like a smooth, um, not necessarily a notch, but a region where it's going to rest against it. The other way is the... Um, distal end is kind of smushed. I know, it's super anatomical terms. Um, but that's just one way to keep in mind the smushed end is near the foot. So if we go ahead and look at the top, um, head of the fibula is going to kind of push up against the tibia. We've got the shaft of the fibula. And then here, this pointy part, Hopefully you can see that okay. This is gonna be our lateral malleolus. This is the bump on the outside of your ankle that you can feel. Um, so you can figure out if you're holding a left or right based on um, the direction that the tibial, well, where the tibia would be located. So um, because it fits against the anterior part this notch is going to fit more anterior to the tibia. Um, it looks like we've got a left here. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm not going to ask you if a fibula is left or right. Okay? I definitely will ask you about the femur and the tibia, though. Okay. Last one. The foot. Uh, so, similar to the hand, We've got our phalanges. This time we have our metatarsals instead of metacarpals. Metatarsals and then our tarsal bones. All right, so phalanges again, going from the big toe, we've got one, two, three, four, five. That's how we uh, number them. And then we've got our distal, proximal, and then for the rest of them, distal, middle, proximal. Distal, middle, proximal. Again, we have our met, um, Yes, metatarsals, one, two, three, four, five. Um, same thing with the um, metacarpals. We've got the head, shaft, and base. And then we get to the tarsal bones, all right? So easiest way is to um, start with the big toe side. This is gonna be our first cuneiform. Uh, it's also referred to as the medial cuneiform. We then have the second cuneiform, which is intermediate. And then we have the lateral cuneiform, which is the third. So as you can see, it goes one, two, three. Okay? 
Next to that, we've got this guy here who's kind of large. It's all the way on the side by the um, pinky toe. That is your cuboid. Just above your cuneiforms is this narrow tarsal. This is the navicular. Above the navicular, we have the talus. And then if we look at a lateral view, this, which is the heel of your foot, is the calcaneus. And that is the lower appendicular skeleton. Um, hopefully you can see everything okay. If not, just send me a message or I'll chat with you in class. Um, feel free to ask me any questions you have. Hopefully I can um, make some clarifications. All right? Thanks for watching.